Hello and welcome to chapter 8 which is on accruals and prepayments. Now this is a very commonly examined area and you can expect to see at least one question on this topic in your exam. Now accruals and prepayments are a type of year-end adjustment that we see and the purpose of making this adjustment is to apply the accruals concept to make sure that we show as our expenses the amount that we incur during the year and in terms of our income, the amount that we've earned during the period. Now, if we have a look down at the introductory section in section one, you'll see here we refer to this accruals or this matching concept. So this is the reason why we make these year-end adjustments for accruals and prepayments. And the reason why we have to make these adjustments is because the cash that we pay or receive and the invoices that we pay or receive may not exactly match the pattern over which we're using resources or indeed earning income. So we're going to start off by looking at accruals and we have here in section two a definition of what we mean by an accrual. So an accrual is an expense that is incurred by the business during the year but which is paid for and probably invoiced after the year end. Now the sort of things that you're likely to see accruals for in your exam might be things like electricity bills that are received after the year end for the last couple of months of the year. Or it might be the same for the telephone where we've used the telephone during the last month or two of the year but we haven't yet received a phone bill. Staff bonuses are another thing that we might accrue for because they relate to the accounting period but they're paid in the following year. And then finally we may have a year-end staff party that we make an accrual for. So just to make it clear, an accrual is a liability, it's a current liability in the statement of financial position and it represents the obligation to pay for the service already used. So let's have a look over the page then at an illustration of when an accrual might be necessary in a set of accounts. So we've got an individual called John who started his business on the 1st of January and he uses gas in his business from the first day of the year. Now John has been sent two gas bills. The first gas bill covers the period from the 1st of January to the 28th of February, so two months. And then the second gas bill covers March, April and May, so three months. Now let's say for example, John wants to close his books on the 31st of March. Now what he needs to do in order to calculate his expense is he needs to work out the value of the electricity, sorry, the gas that he has used during that three month period. So the way in which he can do it, well the easy bit is he can take the $250 that he used in January and February and that he was invoiced for on the 15th of March. So that invoice will already be included in John's books. Now the problem is that as well as recognising an expense for January and February, John also needs to recognise an expense for March as well. And we say that the gas expense for March needs to be accrued because as you can see, we have not yet received an invoice. Now, because we're preparing the accounts after the period end, by the time we actually get around to doing our accounts, we will have seen this invoice for $330, which covers the three month period from March, April and May. So therefore, all we do is we just make an estimate based on this bill of the gas that we used in March. So we simply take a third of that bill. So you can see there we have our total expense for that three month period. And this expense that we've calculated for March is what we call our accrual. So therefore what we will do in our statement of financial position, we will show this accrual as a current liability. Although we haven't yet received the bill, we've used the gas, so therefore we owe the money. So in terms of how this will be reflected 
in John's nominal ledger, just going back to the beginning of the year, when he receives his first gas bill on the 15th of March, he will post his expense for January and February. So he'll debit his gas expense and then he'll either credit trade payables when he receives the bill or he'll just credit cash as he pays it. However, we know that the true expense for the period ended 31st of March is more than that. So as we said, we need to accrue the gas used in March. And the way that we'll do that in our T account is we will put a debit in our gas expense account for that 110 that we've already calculated and we'll put a credit of $110 in our accrual account. So therefore when we now balance off our gas expense T account we've got the correct balance for the three months gas that we have used to go to our statement of profit or loss and then in our statement of financial position we have got our liability. Now let's take this example a stage further and think about what's going to happen in John's next accounting period. So let's say that John decides he's going to make up his next set of accounts for the two months ending the 31st of May. Now we know already from the previous illustration what John's gas expense should be for that two month period. It will simply be the invoice that was received on the 31st of May and multiply it by two thirds to cover the two months of April and May. The expense for March we already showed in the previous accounting period. So therefore we want to be showing an expense of $220. Now because we've received and let's assume we've paid that bill on the 31st of May, we don't actually want to show an accrual at the end of May because we've already dealt with it. We don't have to make the accrual because we've received the invoice. Now if we do nothing and we make no further adjustments, we have a bit of a problem because in our gas T account for our expense, we will automatically post the invoice as we receive it of $330. However, in our accruals account, we have a balance brought forward of $110, which we don't need. So basically, if we do nothing, our expense is too high and we've got an accrual that we don't need. So therefore, the golden rule, if we have an accrual at the start of the period, is we have to reverse it at the start of the next period. And the way that we do this is we do the opposite double entry to what we did in the first place. So we're going to debit or decrease our accruals account, which remember is a liability, and we will credit, which will also decrease our gas expense account. So the way that this will show up in the nominal ledger is in our accruals account, we're going to put a debit entry in to remove that opening accrual we'll put a credit entry in our expense account to effectively take out the expense for March because that was in the last accounting period. And you will see that when we balance off our expense account with a figure of $220, we actually get back to the expense that we calculated in the first place for April and May. So all we're doing is we're using this double entry to account from the discrepancy between when we're using the gas and when we receive the invoices. Okay, so that's basically an introduction to accruals. What we're going to do next in the next lecture is we're going to move on and take a look at prepayments.